Hello and welcome. Thank you for popping into my channel. If you are new here, please like and subscribe for me. If you find this content helpful, smash that notification bell so that you don't miss out on the next video. Comment below with anything that you need help with or topics you'd like me to cover and check out my website, consultingninja.tech. With that out of the way, let's get to it. We are gonna handle some more errors today, but this time we're looking at page load errors with SvelteKit. Page load errors, but also layout errors as well. This applies there. Anywhere where there is a, a load function running, uh, this applies in that, in that instance. Now, briefly, I'll just look at the documentation here, show you guys the documentation for errors. SvelteKit has this separate uh, between expected errors and unexpected errors. And before I get any further, let me just point out that they talk about expected and unexpected errors but I would challenge you that if you are using a third party library or there's a chunk of code that you have in your application that could throw an error, then you should be wrapping that also in a try catch. There's lots of cool stuff that you can do with SvelteKit regarding unexpected errors. They have a handle error uh, hook for dealing with errors that you weren't expecting where you can tap into, you know, something like Sentry and, you know, do some cool stuff with, with that error as far as getting a code for it and a message or whatever. But if there's a section in your application where you're using a third-party library or there's a possibility for some sort of failure, I again would challenge you that that should be wrapped in a try-catch and that would allow you to handle it in an expected way, right? Uh, the goal uh, while unex the unexpected error handling is nice, the goal should be every single error that you have in your application should be expected. Now, I'm not saying that it will never be the case that you'll have an unexpected error. I'm just saying that's what we should be working towards in our applications. So with that out of the way, uh, let's continue on. I previously wrote this small little application that doesn't really do anything. Um, there's just a button and if you click the button, uh, it, it ran an, a an API call. A and then from that API call, I used that to show you guys what was up with wrapping your async await in a try catch as well. Uh, you always want to be catching your errors. That's the whole point in uh, creating try catch, right? So if you have an error in your load, let's create a load function here. Let's just create new file and plus page.js. And here, all we're gonna do is export function load. And I'm just gonna throw a regular old error, throw new error, like that, and save that. And now when the page tries to load, you'll see in the background here, I've got this really ugly, nasty looking uh, error. And I don't have, this is the default, uh, default page error there's actually three levels to errors okay you have your page error so that would be an error um, from your plus page.js you also have an error and you can also have errors in your load functions right so that would be i'm sorry not your load functions your layouts so if you had a, a load on your layout and that had an error then there would be a different error page rendered there. And then there's also like the, the fallback to the fallback to the fallback. <laughs> and that is, actually I can show you what that looks like. So in here I will import, and I'm gonna make this an incorrect statement so that it errors out. And what I wanna point out here is that it's basically always one level higher. So if you're uh, page.js errors out, it's going to look for an error page uh, on one level higher. So inside of this, if I make an incorrect import, let's just say svelte.js slash kit, and I'll leave the at sign off of here. Then I'm going to get, this is the default default, this is the backup, right? And this is what's going to render if you don't have any of your own custom styled backup backup and in order to customize this one i'll link to the description uh, for the error docs it's down towards the bottom to create one for a page or a layout is super straightforward it's easier than modifying that one even 
you can just create inside of wherever that same load function lives, create a plus error dot svelte. And I do need to fix that import. So I'm just going to get rid of that. And inside of here, I'm going to make an h1. Just say, you really messed up. And give that a save. And give this a refresh. And now that load function is hitting and throwing that error. And because I have a plus error.svelte file in that same level, then it renders this error file for our end users, which is pretty cool, right? So now we can style this however you'd like. Let me just quickly wrap this in a div. I hate when things are scrunched off to the side of the screen. You would think they would have at least had a default style for all pages, but I guess not. They can't do it all, okay? They're doing their best, and SvelteKit rocks. <laughs> if this is if this is the their biggest mistake, then you know what? Bless their hearts. I love SvelteKit. I hope you guys like it as well. I'm just gonna make this centered because it drives me nuts. Okay. So this is what it looks like when we're rendering our own page, uh, error page. And again, that custom error is available uh, in any load function. So anywhere you have a load function, it's going to render the nearest error.svelte. Uh, so we have those available everywhere that you have a load function running. Inside of plus page.js, let's go ahead and take a look at what it would look like to add an additional gracefulness to this <laughs> handling of this error. And SvelteKit makes that easy. They have an error that we can import here, uh, their own error handler, rather. It's error with a small e, and we're importing that from at sign sveltejs slash kit. And then here, instead of throwing new error with a big e, let's throw, uh, you take off the new as well. You're not throwing a new, you're just throwing error. And this lets us do a few things. We can set a custom status, Right, so by default, the error status, if you don't do anything, would be 500. That's just the generic server error. But if you're handling the error the graceful way and you're throwing it yourself, you can set the status to whatever you want it to be. And then the other cool thing that we have available here is you can add a custom string or object. Let's do an object. Let's say message. You really messed up let's make this clear my error message and then give that a save now in our plus error dots felt we actually can import uh, sorry let's make a script first this is a, this is a markup file so we have to have our script tag and then we're importing page from our default SvelteKit stores. So dollar sign app slash stores. And then that gives us access to everything that's inside a page, which there's actually quite a bit there. I won't get into all of that. If you want to see it, uh, by all means, add right up in your script at a console.log and like this. And if you want to print this, you do have to put the dollar sign in front of it because you're accessing the value. It is a store. Just a couple of tidbits there for you. So what we want to do though, is we want to give the user that message. So let's make an H2 and let's say dollar sign page.error.message like that. Give that a save. And then you can see that there is the error message that we're adding to that object, which is super cool, right? Pretty cool to have that a capability to gracefully handle our errors that way. It allows us to set those, again, set those statuses, the error statuses, uh, and also the messaging. It makes it easy for us as developers to gracefully handle those errors, provide meaningful messages to our users. And also, I want to point out here before I get too far, if you're going to use a custom object here, 
you do need to update your types if you're using TypeScript. Inside of the documentation, they do talk about that, I believe. Somewhere in here, let's just take a quick look. Yeah, here it is towards the bottom, type safety. So it tells you where that you would have to update this. It's inside of the app.d.ts. And I don't have that file since this isn't a TypeScript project. But I did want to point that out because TypeScript is pretty popular. So if you're using TypeScript, make sure that you update your type there. If this were my application and I was using TypeScript, what I would do is, uh, just like I have in all of my backends and APIs, I always have a custom standard response. So if you ping an API, you always want to send back a consistent response. And I have uh, error, success, a message, and then a data prop that I use. That's just my standard. You could do something absolutely similar for error handling and you just would have a default, uh, a standard, I'm sorry, a standard object that you put here, and then you just would create a type, and then everywhere else in your application, and you'd use that as well. It'd keep things consistent, and then provides that additional benefit that we're familiar with with TypeScript, which is uh, showing us everything that's on those objects without having to do too much digging. So there we have our error handling with page errors, page load errors. That's pretty cool stuff. I hope that you guys have found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe. Comment below with any thoughts. And as always, have a great day. Mm -hmm.